That's the Abbott and Costello program, starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Brought to you by Camel, the cigarette of costlier, properly aged tobaccos. The Abbott and Costello program, with the music of Carl Hoff and his orchestra, our singing star, Amy Arnell, and spotlighting that chunky, chubby little cherub, who, when caught putting a needle and thread in his Uncle Artie Stebbins' pocket, because he heard him say he was going out on a tear, calmly said... I'm a bad boy! Costello. Costello. Come here. Come here. Let me look at you. Well, what are you doing in those pajamas? Oh, Abbott. I've been... Pajamas? <laughs> hey, Abbott, I've been a born I figured out my income tax. And boy, am I happy. Why? I'm going to pay less than I ever paid before. How is that? I put the government down as a dependent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Costello, why do you ask me to help you with your income tax? Oh, why should I ask you? Well, because I happen to have a business school diploma, and that makes me a certified public accountant. I beg your pardon? That makes you what? A uh, certified public accountant. Well, I've got electricity in my hair. Does that make me a bridge lamp? I know. <laughs> Talk sense, please. Uh, let me see your income tax blank. Oh, I'm not using a blank this year, Abbott. I'm making up my tax return on my handkerchief. On a handkerchief? What's yeah. the idea? This year I'm paying through the nose. I... <laughs> That's ridiculous. Uh, first, tell me, who has to f- file an income tax? Now, do you Everybody know? Everybody but babies. Uh, why not babies? Because they can't tell you what they want taken off. Uh, well, uh... <laughs> now, still, look, will you be, will you be serious? Uh, what does the blank say about salaries? Well. It says like this. When did I read it? Read it carefully. Yeah. Salaries are income received from others consisting of wages, fees, commission, bonuses, and other compensation for personal services, and interest accrued in excess of exemption, and anyone around my base is it. How did that get in there? <laughs> Look, what does, it say? what does it say about Schedule A? Oh, Schedule A. Yes. Schedule A. It says, see paragraph 5, Schedule B. Uh, well, what does uh, Schedule B say? It says, run around paragraph B and detour to paragraph 7. Uh, look, never mind. What does it say in paragraph 7? It says, you won't give up, eh? No. Oh. <laughs> look, let's go back to Schedule Let's go back to Schedule A. Read it. Go ahead. All right. Now, Schedule A says, Section 4 says, yes. total net short-term capital gains, enter as item... Ten. Column five, upper six, lower seven. Stick them up, Lone Ranger. I've got you covered. <laughs> now, will, you cut... <laughs> will you cut out the silliness, Costello? Now, answer this question. What, what is your income? Oh, about three o'clock in the morning. I, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm talking about your income, less withholding tax. Uh, the answer to that is obvious. Obvious? Mm. Okay, I'll write the answer down. Now, go ahead. How do you spell obvious? I, I, no, 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 no. I better break the question up for you. Okay. Hey, you have it. After you got it broken up, will you do me a favor? What? Throw it away. Look, let's go on with the next question. Are you living with husband and wife? I have no wife, and I'm not living with my husband. Oh, <laughs> oh you left him, eh? Why did you do it? Ah, oh, because he was very mean to me, and he beat me over the head with one of the children. I... Wait a minute! I, I haven't got no husband. I'm old maid. Look, Costello, <laughs> if, you're, if you're single, what are the names of your parents? Papa and Mama. <laughs> Look, what was your mother's name before she got married? I don't know. I didn't know her then. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we'll come back to that later. Remember, you can't, you can't cheat or you'll deprive the government of money they need. What do they need it for? Well, for instance, the government needs money to build bridges. Uh, do you know why we have to have more bridges? Sure, to keep the taxpayers coming across. No, no, no. No, no, no. no. We need the money for public works. Like, for instance, the FHA. Do you know anything about the FHA? Is that anything like OB? What, what is OB? That's B-O, spelled backwards. No, 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 no. The FHA is the Federal Housing Administration. Now, suppose you wanted to build a house for $10,000 and you only had 7000 What would you do? Marry a dame with $3,000. <laughs> well, there's no sense talking money with you. You don't even know the difference between capital and labor. Oh, yes, I do. If I loan you $10, that's capital. That's right. But when I try to get it back, that's labor. <laughs> now, there you go again. Look, here, I'll explain it to you. Capital is the useful expenditure that employs labor. For example, you go into a store and you spend a dollar. What do I buy? Uh, uh, Well, now, look, that doesn't make any difference. It makes a difference to me. When I spend a dollar, I want to know what I'm getting, (laughs) brother. I'm I'm only using... Thank you, Mom. Never mind. (laughs) (laughs) Will you listen to me? I'm trying to straighten out your affairs here. I'm only trying... 
trying to use that as an example. I'm trying to make a point. Yeah, but you're shooting my money. I should. No, look. I'm only trying to show you how money circulates. Suppose you spend a dollar. It, it starts to circulate. Uh, 30 cents of your dollar might uh, wind up in the pocket of some man in New Hampshire. What's his name? Uh, well, what's whose name? That guy in New Hampshire that just gripped me for 30 cents. No, no, no. That's just an illustration. The man could be in Florida. How do you like that? Now he went south with my 30 cents. <laughs> Costello, you know so little about money, it's no wonder you are able to pay your taxes at all. Oh, I got all the money I need to pay my taxes. Th- then what is worrying you? Where I can borrow a couple of bucks to live on. Oh, no, no. no. <laughs> Why, that's the silliest thing I ever heard of. Listen, Costello, no matter how much taxes there are, the government always leaves you something. Oh, yeah. Do you know my girlfriend, Lena Gensler? Yes. Well, she walked into the tax office wearing a hat by Dache, a dress by Scaparelli, and jewels by Tiffany. And when she got through paying her taxes... What happened? She walked out wearing a beer bottle by, by Slicks. Ah. <laughs> Look at a map of the United States. Let your eyes travel to practically any town on that map. And there'll be a place where some doctor was asked the question, what cigarette do you smoke, doctor? Three leading independent research organizations put the question to 113,000 doctors from border to border, from coast to coast. And the brand most named by doctors was Camels. Certainly, you'll say, if you're a Camel smoker now, why not? Why shouldn't a doctor go for that rich, full flavor and cool mildness just as I do? And if you're not a camel smoker, try a pack right away. According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. It's Carl Hoff and the Camel Orchestra with their swing styling of Who's Sorry Now? Please listen to me. Tomorrow's the deadline to pay your income tax. Now, where are you going to get the money? I don't know, Abbott. Will you loan me the money? No, sorry, Costello. I never loan money. You loan money to a person and you lose his friendship. That's all right, Abbott. I've got too many friends anyway. <laughs> I need yeah, some money. I, I beg your pardon, fatty boy. i got to get a message through to my wife. Could I use your fountain pen? Your fountain pen? Your fountain pen? My fountain pen? No, your telephone. <laughs> okay, there's the phone over there. Oh, thank you, thank you. Hello, operator. I want to talk to my wife in Glendale. In Glendale. In Glendale. Glendale? No, Pasadena. <laughs> uh, the number is 135-7114-684. Four. Two. It's a good, good thing that it's not a dial telephone. <laughs> oh, okay, operator, I'll wait. Costello, why do you let this fella come in here in the middle of our business and cause all this disturbance? Now, now, don't get excited, buddy. This is a very important call. My wife has been getting out of line lately, and I've got to tell her off. Oops, that's it. Hello, Emma. Yeah. Yeah, this is me. Oh, is that so? 
Well, you can expect me home in 15 minutes. What? Well, put it back on the stove and keep it hot for me. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, you trying to throw her off, mister. Do you think she'll do it? Why, sure. She knows I can't wash dishes in cold water. <laughs> oh, so long, fatty boy. Fatty boy. Boy. Boy? No, stubby. <laughs> Now, look, you've got to get the money to pay your taxes. Hey, come on. Let's go across the hall to Mrs. Niles. Now, look, talk nice to her, Costello. She might loan you the money. Hello, Mr. Rabbit. Oh, you brought back the wash tub you borrowed. What? What wash tub? <laughs> oh, oh, pardon me. That's Costello. <laughs> I wish you hadn't said that, Mrs. Niles. I was just going to tell you that you look like a million dollars. Costello, you never saw a million dollars. That's right. You look like something I never saw before. <laughs> now, don't talk like that, Costello. I think Mrs. Niles is beautiful. She has a lovely smile. Oh, thank you, Mr. Abbott. I should have a lovely smile. I go to see my dentist twice every year. Yes, ma'am. Once for each tooth. <laughs> talk if I were you, Costello. I just saw your latest picture called The Little Giant. Oh, you did? How'd you like it? Oh, I thought it was very funny. Thank you. But with you in it, they should have called it the oversized wart. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you tell Costello off, dear. Oh, you're so refreshing, dear. <laughs> you're my little grapefruit. Oh, no, kid, it. you're my little grapefruit. Oh, no, I insist that you're my little grapefruit. And I insist that you're my little grapefruit. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you just heard from a couple of old squirts. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Costello, remember what you're here for. Oh, yes. Mrs. Niles, I need money to pay my income tax. Could you lend me $500, please? $500? Mm-hmm. Sir, Costello, I haven't that much money. Didn't you get any money from the accident? I haven't. I never had any accident. <laughs> Don't tell me you were born with that bush. <laughs> Costello, I refuse to argue with you. You're no gentleman. In my day, men didn't fight with women. In your day, the men were too busy fighting the Indians. <laughs> well, you certainly fixed yourself with Mrs. Niles. What are you going to do now? Uh, hey, wait a minute. Why don't you call your Aunt May? She has a stocking full. I'd rather call Betty Grable. She's got two stockings full. <laughs> Look, you've got to get the money somewhere, Costello. Let's go around the neighborhood and see, see if you can get it from some of your friends, huh? Okay. Hey, look, Abbott. It's the actress, Fussy May Mucho. Hello, Miss Mucho. Hello, boys. Aren't you working today, Miss Mucho? Well, I was working in a picture at Om G. Om, and they had to postpone it. <laughs> the leading mon had a severe talk of streptococcus. <laughs> streptococcus? Ah, uh, sure, Abby, you know what streptococcus is. That's where you get those little boobs in your tonsils. <laughs> Listen, Bessie, Costello's trying to borrow some money to pay his income tax. Well, that's easy. Whenever I need cash, I go to the bank. Bank? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Didn't you ever get any cash from a bong? No, every time I go, I write a cheek. It boots <laughs> Well, I must be going now, boys. Good luck to you, Mr. Costello, and uh, off we to train to you. And a hot weenie sandwich to you, too. <laughs> Costello, do you realize that your income tax payment has to be in tomorrow? Oh, uh, here, let's stop in here and see our old friend Scotty Brown. We'll take a chance. I wish you would not knock on my door, ladies. When you come to my house, it's bad. It wakes up the termites and they start chewing on the foundation. <laughs> hey, Scotty, old friend, I'm in trouble and I need $500 to pay my income tax. Oh, I'd like to help you, laddie, but I just suffered a terrible financial setback. Financial setback? What happened? Well, I bought a pound of rice for supper. And when I was counting the kernels to see that I got a full pound, a terrible thing happened. One of the kernels rolled down the drain pipe. Oh. <laughs> well, Costello, 
<laughs> this is what you get for waiting until the last minute to pay your taxes. Now, yeah, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Can, can you please loan me some money? No, no, I'm sorry, Costello. I paid my taxes last week, and I don't have a cent. I, I'm a pauper. Well, congratulations, Abbott. What was it, a boy or a girl? <laughs> I didn't know you were a pauper. Will you stop the stances, please? Now, you need money to pay your taxes, don't you? Yeah. Well... Why don't you go into this phone booth right here and call up your uh, Uncle Artie Stebbins? He's got plenty of money. Oh, that's a good idea, Rabbit. Well, let him loosen up. Good old Uncle Artie Stebbins. He, he wouldn't turn me down. Number, please. Operator, give me my Uncle Artie Stebbins. Beverly Hills, 312. Hello? Hello, Uncle Artie. This is Louis Costello. How are you, Uncle Artie? Just fine. What can I do for you, Louis? Uncle Artie, I have to pay my income tax, and I wondered if you could loan me $500. Talk louder. I can't hear you, Louis. I said, could you loan me $500? I can't hear you, Louie. Could you loan me $500? I can't hear a word, Louie. Pardon me, Mr. Stebbins. This is the operator, and I can hear him very plain. Then you loan him the money. <laughs> This study of doctors' cigarette preferences went practically everywhere. Into skyscrapers on New York's Fifth Avenue, the mountains of Tennessee, the New England hills, and the bayou country of Louisiana. Into every state of the 48. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor, was the query. And the result? Well, the brand named most was Camel. Try Camels on your own tea zone. That's tea for taste and tea for throat. The most critical laboratory for testing a cigarette. See how your taste responds to Camel's rich, full flavor. How your throat reacts to the cool mildness of its superb blend of costlier tobaccos. According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke Camels than any other cigarette. For Camel fans everywhere, here's lovely Amy Arnell to sing... One-zy, two-zy, I'll kiss you-zy, two-zy, three-zy, you kiss me-zy, three-zy, four-zy, kiss the more-zy, let's start counting higher. Four-zy, five-zy, let's get five-zy, five-zy, six-zy, hug me quick-zy, six-zy, seven-zy, this is heaven-zy, my heart's on a flyer. Keep the numbers going till the song is done. Love will keep on growing, and we'll have lots of fun. Seven Z, eight Z, you're my date Z. Eight Z, nine Z, eight is fine Z. Nine Z, ten Z, star again Z. One Z, two Z, I love you Z. Racy, horsey, runsy, onesy, Betsy, wetsy, lose my munsy, try again, Z, in a frenzy, at the Santa Nitsa. Baseball player striking out, Z, mean old lump, I shout, Z, wow, Z, take your base, Z, drive me crazy, my heart skips a beat, Z, keep the numbers rising, till the song is done, I'll keep vocalizing, and we'll have lots of fun. Third Z, B's is in the trees is always sing these melodies is nine Z, ten Z, starts again Z, one Z, two Z, three Z, four Z, five Z, six Z, seven Z, eight Z, nine Z. Well, come on, Costello, walk faster. I can't. I walked all over town. Nobody will loan me $500 to pay my taxes. Well, it's your own fault. What do you do with all your money? Well, it cost me a lot of money to live. Yesterday, I spent over $1,000 for coffee. $1,000? Yeah. Oh, now, calm now, calm. <laughs> How could you spend $1,000 in one day for street car fare? I forgot to ask for transfers. I... <laughs> Costello, why don't you save your money? Do you realize that if you save $10 a week, only $10 a week, in 10 years, you'd have $20,000. Just think, Costello. If a depression came along, you'd have $20,000. Suppose we don't have a depression in 10 years. There, there I am, stuck with all that money. I... <laughs> Costello, there's only one way to raise your tax money. You've got to borrow the money from a loan company. Come on, I think there's one down the street. Pardon me, young man. Do you know how to get to the office of the OPA? No, I don't. Well, you go down this street, turn to the left, and then you go three blocks to the right. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, you... 
You, you asked me. I asked you what? How'd they get to the office of the OPA? Well, you go down the street. <laughs> <laughs> Will you get out of here, please? Hey, Costello. Hey, look, Costello, it's Melonhead. Oh, Melonhead. Hey, I'm in a hurry, Melonhead. I gotta go across the street to the loan office to borrow some money. I'll see you later. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where are you gonna be later? I don't know. I might be anywhere. Oh, now I should chase all over town looking for you, huh? I should leave my poor doubting wife sitting alone while I'm running all over town looking for you. No, don't leave your wife. Stay with her. Stay with her every minute. Oh, 24 hours a day, I gotta look at her ugly puss, huh? <laughs> well, what do you want to see me about, Costello? I don't want to see you. Oh, I don't want to see me, huh? And why did you say you'd see me later? That's just the old expression like uh, your father's mustache. What's wrong? <laughs> What's wrong with my father's mustache? <laughs> Nothing. I'd like to see it. Oh, you would, huh? <laughs> Get this guy. My father's been dead for 20 years. He wants me to dig him up just so he can see what his mustache is. <laughs> Look, Malahe, I'm trying to get money to pay my income tax. You come here, you're driving me to distraction. I gotta drive you, huh? Too proud to walk. <laughs> I love walking. I think everybody should walk. Oh, a fine thing. My brother John sells bicycles. But no, you say everybody should walk. I got None against bicycles? Thanks, John. <laughs> I, I hope your brother sells a million bicycles. I, I hope he makes a fortune. Sure. His income tax isn't high enough now, huh? Look, well, Melonhead, I'll agree with you. Your brother's income tax is too high. He shouldn't pay so much. Oh, he should cheat the government, huh? <laughs> Look, Melonhead, anybody that cheats the government is a no good rat, a heel, a chisel, and a thief. Go on, him. <laughs> go on, go on Make my children ashamed of me Look, Melahead, Your children ain't ashamed of you they, They've never been ashamed of you No, then why didn't they come to see me last summer in Alcatraz? <laughs> Will you wait I minute? hope you're satisfied, Costello Now you've told everybody in the country I'm a convict I ought to punch you right in your fat nose Now you got me good and mad, Melahead. Put up your hands All right, my hands are up And my hands are up And my hands are up and are up. All right, all right, our hands are up. Well, what are you going to do about it? Let's play patty cake. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Costello. Let's get into the loan office and get that tax money. Hurry up. Abbott. What? I don't know whether I want to borrow any money from a loan company or not. <laughs> Suppose my friends found it out. Oh, nonsense. See that sign up there? Confidential loan company. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Here comes the man now. Good morning. I would like to... I was just going to... All I want... This guy is losing compression. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you'll have to speak in a whisper. This is a confidential loan company. Understand? Everything here is strictly confidential. I am Mr. I.O. Silver. I arrange the loans. Oh, I.O. Silver, the loan arranger. <laughs> I have to ask you a few simple questions. Where were you born? I don't know. But you must know. Where was your mother at the time? She was in Chicago. <laughs> and you were born in Chicago. No, I wasn't. I was traveling with my uncle Artie Stebbins at the time. <laughs> you tell me, will you talk sense yes. to the man? Please, please. What day of the week were you born on? Thursday. How did you know it was Thursday? Of course, the next day we had fish. <laughs> <laughs> Lou, I told you to cut that out, didn't I? Quiet now, Lou. Well, remember, we must keep this strictly confidential. Now, are you the only child? No. I was one of triplets. Triplets? Hmm. What were they, all boys? No. One was a boy and one was a girl. But you said triplets. What was the other one? I don't know. The day we were born, the third one flew away and we never found out. <laughs> Serious. Now, now listen, what's your name? What's your name and how much money do you want to borrow? Well, my, my name is Luke Costello. And I want to borrow $500 if you'll promise to keep it very confidential. My dear boy, that is the name of our company, the Confidential Loan Company. Now, I don't have $500 in the office right now, but I'll call one of my associates right down the block. We'll keep it all very confidential, of course. Okay. Pardon me while I open the window. Why don't you try Sam on 59th Street? 
Jeffrey. Okay. Why are you at it? Say hello to my aunt in Patterson, New Jersey. <laughs> Hello, will you keep your voice down? Hey, Sam, have you got $1,000? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I only need $500. Quiet. I need $500 for myself. <laughs> Come on, Abbott. Come on, I'm getting out of this place. Wait a minute, Costello. The man will get the money. Yeah, but everybody in the world will know that I want to borrow money. That's ridiculous, young man. Maybe one or two people might hurt me, but they'll forget all about it. Well, if it's just one or two people heard you, then I guess it's all right. Extra! X-ray! Luke Costello's broke! We are broke! <laughs> Costello will be back for Camel Cigarettes in just a moment. And now, tonight's salute to the men in the armed forces who won through to victory. Tonight, we hail the famous 102nd Ozark Division, heroes of the Siegfried Line, the Ruhr, and Munchengladbach. Since the beginning of the war, the makers of camels have sent over 150 million free camels to our fighting men overseas. But now, with demobilization in progress... Free camels are sent to servicemen's hospitals instead. This week, the camels go to Veterans Hospital, Wadsworth, Kansas, U.S. Marine Hospital, Chicago, Illinois, U.S. Army AAF Regional and Convalescent Hospital, Coral Gables, Florida, U.S. Naval Hospital, Memphis, Tennessee, and Veterans Hospital, Palo Alto, California, in your honor, men of the Ozark Division. <laughs> Go out to the United States twice a week. Our rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are stationed and to our good neighbors in Central and South America. And now here are Bud Abbott and Lou Costello with a final word. Well, Costello, you, you want to feel pretty good now that you've got your income tax all figured out. Oh, yeah, Abbott. There was nothing to it. In fact, I feel like an expert, and I'm coming down in the middle of the audience, and I'm going to help all you people with your income tax. No, no, send us to jail. No, anything but that. Oh, <laughs> Wait a minute. Gee, you don't know how smart I am. Well, if you're so smart, tell me. Why is a lollipop like a racehorse? I don't know. Why is a lollipop like a racehorse? The more you lick it, the faster it goes, huh? <laughs> Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. And don't forget to give to your local Red Cross. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, try camels in your tea zone. See if they don't suit your taste, your throat, to a tea. C-A-M-E-L-S. National Joy Smoke. That's Prince Albert smoking tobacco. Yes, Prince Albert is smoked by more pipes than any other tobacco on earth. For Prince Albert is choice mellow tobacco. Crimp cut for slow, cool burning, specially treated to take out parch and sting and tongue bite. E pack your pipe with Prince Albert for pleasure in every puff. And be sure on Saturday night to tune in the great Prince Albert radio show, Grand Ole Opry, coast to coast on NBC. Be sure to listen at this very same time next week for the Abbott and Costello show for Camel Cigarettes. Thursday night is All-Star Night on NBC. Stay tuned for Rudy Valley over most of these stations. This is Ken Niles in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night for Camel. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.